a person who really cared about his family, a person that really cared about his friends. He was a prankster. He pulled off a lot of ribs over a lot of people. But um, all in all, Owen Hart was considered just a great and pleasant human being. Mick Foley has stated this. We've all seen, at least most of us have seen the tribute show that the WWE did for Owen, which I thought was extremely emotional, extremely touching, and one of the best things I've ever seen in terms of television and guys really caring about the guy. Even Stone Cold Steve Austin, who Owen did have some issues with in terms of what occurred at SummerSlam 1997, um, just capped the show off and um, gave Owen a tribute um, that many, very few people will ever receive. It was one of the most touching things I've ever saw um, on a wrestling program when he toasted Owen. And, you know, even to this day, I get a little choked up looking at that. Um, Owen was just a great guy. Um, I wish I had the opportunity to have met Owen. I never did. Um, never was in the right situation to, to meet him. The WWE rarely traveled. Um, to the southeast, specifically in South Carolina, where I'm stationed, and um, I saw Owen on television. He was all, whether he was a heel or a face, he just seems like a pretty cool cat to me. But I've never heard any negative things about Owen in terms of the fans' perspective, and you know how we are as wrestling fans. Um, even the most jaded wrestling fan is going to have some sort of um, negative perception about something and somebody. Um, Owen never heard one negative thing about the guy. Um, from wrestling fans and this was even at a time when wrestling was really starting to spiral off the internet and so many other social media platforms during the late 90s and entering um, into this decade after Owen had passed so um, you know overall Owen seemed to be a really cool guy um, and you know he has he had a couple of kids with Martha and you know you we even from Brett you heard uh, I read in his book and Read from you know from several other people's um, depictions of Owen Hart's in, Hart in their books that Owen and Martha were just a great great couple who really cared and loved each other dearly um, had um, two um, wonderful um, children and you know you know it was really difficult you know for for, the, for that family um, to Ogen and um, Athena I believe to not have their father around um, um, anymore but I know that um, he's really um, in their in their memories and in their hearts and you know Owen had built a dream house as many people do know now um, Martha and him and the kids were about to move in and um, eventually that terrible um, event transpired in May of 1999 I mean I remember like it was yesterday when my dad told me what had happened um, and I was I believe in eighth grade at the time and he told me that happened. I'm like, there's no way this happened and you hear it and even this was at a time folks where wrestling was really big to the mainstream. So even people in my classroom were like, wow, Brandon, did you hear? Cause they all knew I was a wrestling fan and they're like, Hey, did you hear about Owen? And I'm like, you know, I, I really, really never didn't, didn't hear about it until my dad told me and it, it hit them like a ton of bricks, hit us like a ton of bricks, and it hit the wrestling industry like a ton of bricks. But, you know, Owen was just a great guy, and to lose someone who was so well liked in the business and who was really a great performer, it just wasn't the person, but it was really the guy who was really, really good in the ring. He had all of the traits that was necessary to build around as a huge superstar and also all the traits um, that you need to be a really cool guy outside the business. But, that was Owen Hart as the man, and you guys can look it up yourselves. I mean, you're really, you're very, you're not going to find many people, if any, that are going to say a lot of negative things about Owen Hart. But also, I said I was going to discuss Owen's um, earlier stint in pro wrestling. Now, as several people do know, excuse me, Owen didn't have aspirations to be a pro wrestler. He wanted to be the family man. Um, you know, have kids, have a really good wife, support them. I think he wanted to be a firefighter. Um, that uh, a fireman. He that didn't um, tra transpire, of course. And he eventually um, um, came to and came to um, into the wrestling industry along with his brothers in the second version of Stampede Wrestling in 1986. He teamed um, uh, with several guys in the company before eventually um, teaming up with his brother-in-law Ben uh, Bessarb. Um, excuse me. Um, Bessarab, 
I know it's a weird, weird pronunci pronunciation, but they um, won the Stampede Wrestling International Tag Team Championship in 1986. They had um, fused with Johnny Smith and, of course, Dynamite Kid. Now, this was Dynamite Kid during really his last um, really good phase of his career. Um, injuries had just plagued him to such a degree that eventually he... Um, um, he retired, and he's in the current state that he is now, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Owen, this was the period of time when Owen really started to show a lot of fans that, hey, he has just as much skills as some of his brothers do, if not more. And he won the, he won the um, Pro Wrestling Illustrated's Rookie of the Year Award in 1987 when that award was meaningful. Now, people can crap on Pro, Pro Wrestling Illustrated today because it's not the same publication that it used to be, uh, but... Its ability to support kayfabe to such a degree that you were drawn into the storylines, was drawn into the uh, organizations that you might not have were able to see locally. Like you know, I might not have been able to see Portland wrestling, but I'd be darned if I if I didn't see some information in it in Pro Wrestling Illustrated, as well as the storylines and all of the up-to-date status, the rankings and all that stuff. It was believable as a fan, and you really drew into the kayfabe. It was so believable. The realism was there. And the fans did vote in um, who was the Rookie of the Year and all the other awards that they had in PWI in the 1980s. It was a legit and really big thing. You know, those, those cats, um, George Napolitano, uh, who was in charge of a lot of the photography at the time, and as well as Bill After, who is one of the best um, wrestling magazine editors in the history of this business. Um, they put up, they put together just a, a great wrestling um, publication, and Pro Wrestling Illustrated was that, and, and Owen Hart was the rookie of the year in 1987, and that eventually led to Owen um, going to New Japan Pro Wrestling in 1988, and he, his star shines even brighter by becoming the IWGP um of junior heavyweight champion, um, when he defeated Hiroshi Hase, and many people who don't who are not familiar with Hase, um, he um, was in WCW um, for a little bit, a little period of time, and some of the matches with the um, um, uh, with with the Steiner brothers, with his tag team partner um, Shinya Hashimoto, and you know he 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 had a lot of good good skill in in his own in his own right and him and Owen had um a couple of matches in New Japan Pro Wrestling and they were really good matches and it really exemplified Owen Hart as a guy who was exciting as a singles wrestler and who had a lot of upside in the business and he did but to make a long story short he eventually um doesn't necessarily leave New Japan Pro Wrestling because at the same time he's also wrestling in the WWE for the first time and this was a period when um, Owen, I think the WWE didn't really recognize all of Owen's traits and his skills. And it was still comp considered a really big man's league over in the States in contrast to the, var of the variety of styles that you had in New Japan Pro Wrestling. All Japan Pro Wrestling was mostly of the American big style. New Japan Pro Wrestling featured more of the high flyers, more of the... Um, of the variety of wrestling styles, the martial arts that were implemented um, into into a, a lot of the work, a lot of the work rate um, during the time, Owen exemplified a lot of that stuff. Um, and the WWE, just like sim similar to All Japan in many ways, was a big man organization. Owen couldn't really find his way through there, so the WWE eventually finds something for him, and he becomes the Blue Blazer. And that was that didn't last very long in the company. It seemed like it was always going to be an opening at Owen really wasn't going to get anywhere with it. His most infamous match, of course, was at, was at WrestleMania five against Mr. Perfect. And that match was really just to get Mr. Perfect over in some form, although those two really did have a good match. The fans really didn't buy that much into it. And, you know, it accomplished what it needed to accomplish in terms of helping Mr. Perfect out. But it really didn't provide much for Owen Hart. So, um, to make a long story short, Owen eventually leaves the WWE. He is still contracted over um, at New Japan Pro Wrestling until 1991 in appearances and whatnot. And he, eventually, he find, when his uh, obligations of New Japan Pro Wrestling is, are, are done, he finds his way into World Championship Wrestling. And just like World Championship Wrestling did with so many other really good stars that they had at the time, they didn't see a lot in Owen Hart, although they did partner him up with Ricky Morton, who, whose partner at the time... Um, Robert Gibson was injured with a very severe knee injury which occurred prior to Starcade of 1990 in December of 1990.